calculus class. So today we get to learn topic 12, which is basic derivative rules. Yes, these are the shortcuts for finding the derivatives. Well, the beginning of them. All right, so we're gonna start with some uh, basic functions. The first one is for a constant function. So f of x equals some constant. And if you think about what a constant looks like on a graph, it's just a horizontal line. And a slope of a horizontal line is zero. So that means if you were to draw little tangent lines on along the horizontal line, each of those tangent lines would also be horizontal. So therefore, we, therefore we say the derivative of a constant with respect to x is equal to zero. The other one is the identity function. So f of x equals x. That is just your uh, parent line, which it goes through the origin and has a slope of one. So if you were to draw little tangent lines along that uh, line, that means all of those little tangent lines would also have a slope of one. So we say that the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to one. The power rule, the one that you will be using a lot. So let n be an integer other than zero and a be some constant. Then the derivative of the function f of x equals a times x to the n power is n times a times x to the n minus one. So the rule is you take the current power and you bring it down in front and multiply it with the coefficient of that term. Then you subtract one from the exponent and that gives you your derivative. Exponential functions. The derivative of an exponential function with base a, so that means your function is a to the x, is the derivative of a to the x with respect to x is equal to the natural log of a, so that's your base, times a to the x. And yes, we can go through the whole limit process to figure out what this, how they got this. Um, but if you're bored one night and you want to do it, go for it. And then the derivative of the natural log um, function is f of x is the derivative of e to the x with respect to x with respect to x is equal to e to the x. So that's the same one as this, it's just the natural log of e is one. So that's why we don't have to write the natural log of e. The constant multiple rule. If c is a constant and f is a differentiable function, then we say that the derivative of a constant times a function with respect to x is equal to, so basically you can factor out the constant and then first take the derivative of the function, then multiply by that constant. The addition and subtraction rules. If f and g are both differentiable functions, then if you have two functions being added together or subtracted, basically you can take the derivative of each uh, term or function individually and then add or subtract them. All right, now the examples. So for all of these examples, we're gonna find the derivative. So this is a power function. So we're gonna take the derivative of each term separately and then add them or subtract them together. So. We have an exponent of four, so this four comes down and multiplies the two, and we subtract one from the exponent. So it will look like this. We have f prime equals two times the old exponent times x to four minus one. Then we do the same thing here. The two is gonna multiply the negative three. We're gonna subtract one from the exponent. It will look like this. And this we have uh, two times x, and the derivative of x is just one. Or you can think about it as this exponent's one, so one minus one will get you zero. And then the derivative of a constant is just zero. So now we just simplify each term. So the, now this one we get eight times x to the third, then negative six x, 
and plus two. And that's it. You're done. And you technically do not need to show this middle step. You ideally should be able to go from here to here at once. All right, next one. So this time our exponent is a fraction. That doesn't matter. We're still going to subtract one. So in order to subtract one from this fraction, that means we're actually going to be subtracting five over five. And this fraction is going to multiply the constant in front. So it'll look like this. And when I subtract five over five from negative three fifths, I get negative eight fifths and the negative three because the fives cancel and you're done. The square root function, this one ideally should become um, second nature. Uh, it just takes a while. So with the square root, we know we can rewrite the square root as x to the one half. So now it becomes just the normal power rule. So the one half is going to multiply in front and I'm gonna subtract one from the exponent. So that means I'm gonna subtract two over two. So it looks something like this. And when I do one half minus two over two, I should get a negative one half. Now, my rule of thumb is whatever you started with in the original problem, you should simplify your answer so that it matches. So I started with the actual root symbol. So that means I am going to actually simplify this so it is in a root format. So that means the negative exponent, the x goes down to the bottom, and the 1 half means that I'm going to take the square root of x. So this will be your final answer. Ideally, I want you to get to the point, it might take a few weeks, for you to go from here straight to here with the square root of x. All right. <clears throat> Example four, for this one, we have a constant on top and x to the seventh on the bottom. Any ideas what you might do? I'm hoping that you said, I can bring x to the seventh up to the top by making it a negative exponent. So now I have a constant times x to the negative seven. I'm going to bring the negative 7 down in front and multiply it with the square root of 5 and subtract 1 from the exponent. Now since in my beginning problem I have no negative exponents, that means I want to get rid of this negative x, the eight, x to the negative 8 to power. So that means I'm going to keep the constant on top and bring the x to the 8 to the bottom. Example 5. Any ideas where we're going to start? I hope you said distribute the 3x through to get 3x to the fifth plus 6x. So this just becomes any normal power function. So bring down the 5 to multiply with the 3, subtract 1 from the exponent. And 6x should just be 6, derivative of x is just 1. So now I get 15x to the fourth plus six. And you can leave it like that, that's fine. Um, if you really want to get nitpicky, you can go ahead and distribute out a three so that you now have three times five x to the fourth plus two. All right, example six. So we got an exponential function here. So we have to use our exponential function derivative rule. Here we can simplify by just um, distributing the power of 2 through. Here we're going to have to bring up the x so that we have x to the a negative power. And unless otherwise told, we assume that a is just some constant. So after simplifying, I should get 5 to the x plus 4x squared minus x to the negative 1 plus a. So now I'm going to take the derivative of each piece. So the derivative of the exponential function is the natural log of the base, so natural log of 5, times the actual function, 5 to the x. Here we just have a normal power function, another power function, and then this is just a constant, so that has a derivative of 0. So after doing this, here is my exponential function. 
The 8x comes from 2 times 4, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. Here we have plus x to the negative 2, because this negative 1 multiplies this negative 1, and we subtract 1 from the exponent to get the negative 2. And like I said earlier, the derivative of a constant is 0. And since in my original problem I have no negative exponents, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So this x to the negative 2 is now going to be 1 over x squared. All right, now here is how the AP test is going to actually test how you understand the definition of a derivative. They will not ever ask you to actually show how to take the limit of this to get the derivative by hand. They won't have you do that. Instead, what they do is they present you with this limit, expecting you to identify the function that you are actually taking the derivative of, and then use the shortcut to take the derivative, and then um, evaluate the limit. So the first uh, step is to identify the function and the x value. So here we have the fourth root of 16 plus x. So we had to plug something into the fourth root of something. So that means our function is the fourth root of x. Now the x value at which we are evaluating the derivative at is should be whatever is plus h because that would be your x plus h in our definition of our derivative. So the x value we're working with is 16. And remember that this right here is minus f of x, or f of a, whatever the x value is. And the fourth root of 16 is 2. So now I can go ahead and use a shortcut to find the derivative of this. Then after I find the derivative, plug 16 in. So find the derivative. So I'm going to change the fourth root into x to the 1 fourth multiply the 1 fourth over, subtract 1, which means subtract 4 over 4, and I will get a negative exponent. So after simplifying, I would get 1 over 4 times the fourth root of x to the third. Now I can go ahead and plug in 16 to get the following. Now in order to evaluate this, it's probably best we do have that property with roots and exponents that you can actually take the root first and then take the exponent. So I'm going to take the fourth root of 16, which gives me 2, and then I'm going to cube 2, which gives me 8. And then 8 times 4 gives me 32. So that means my answer choice is B, 1 over 32. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning the shortcuts. There will be many more shortcuts to come, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.